club lights passed over him and he followed them down the bar toward the stairwell. He expected to see someone come up the stairs. The old man was staring forward, oblivious to lights and sound and all, and had an intense and deep depression overcoming him. Will put an arm around the man's bony shoulders. This isn't the place for you, old man. Can't you give it up? The man continued to stare forward and seemed to sober up at the remark and said, There's no place for me in this city, son. If you make it to my age, you'll see. I live my life. I worked hard. Got a lot of respect. The world was mine to play with. I never thought about growing old. Death was always on the horizon, and the horizon doesn't disappear when the sun goes down. Sorry I took you for a run-of-the-mill drunk, Will said. Drink is the only way I convince my head I'm still young and have my health. If I were to be miserable all day, I'd be one of those who simply waits. Son, death can wait for me. That's tremendous, mister. I always thought my wife would outlive me like my dad's wife outlived him. There are more widows than widowers in the world. Everyone's got the same fears and hopes. You can only make the right choices if you know what makes you happy, what makes life worth living. Listen to your friends, listen to your family, but never follow an opinion blindly. Without choice, I would be you and you me. Well said, old man, well said. There's some fount of wisdom tonight. The old man finally looked him in the eyes. His eyes were a faded gray around the pupils, his brow carved by time. Son, we're not worth anything but time, and I've done mine in this world. I've done my time. Behind bars or not, we're all doing time. My wife, she's in the grave. God love her. She's free. My boy, live your life on your own terms. Have at it. Watch out for the girls and never drink on an empty stomach. Cass came out of the woodwork and almost walked by them. She was all wired out. Geek, as they say. Here. She passed him his titanium blade, the one he had lost long ago. She passed it to him, and they never touched hands. He simply felt the cold metal in his palm. Beautiful weight. Stone worth a weight. Heavy enough to make it meaningful to your hand. And Cass was gone, upset, fucked up. The old man was staring forward again. Will called the bartender over to set a bourbon before his friend. The man took the stir out and took the glass into his cupped and shaking hands. The blade, the blade. Will examined the titanium sheath with the holes in it, gripped it again and threw his wrist back in a sharp motion. The blade fell back and locked on the slack hinge. He pressed the lock release with an inside of his pinky on the grip and then tapped the blade in with his forefinger and repeated the motion over and over unconsciously. Club lights caught hold of the ecstasy in a woman's face as she walked across the floor and stood at the bar, a man by her shoulder seated, plucking an olive from his martini. The bartender served her and made his way back to the elbow in the bar. His beer perspired before him half full, tried to keep the motion of the knife below the level of the bar. A faint promise tingled through him, confidence that he had finally reconciled Bella to a past he had not lived in vain, and faith in an unalterable part of him that had simply been collecting dust. Cass was on his mind. Only she could polish the virtues out of his tarnished soul. He thought to ask you to use the phone again, and when he looked up, the bartender stood motionless before him.